All right, guys, welcome back. Today, we're going to be showing you how to degree the cams on your Hibusa engine. So, don't pay attention to any of this first. First things you gotta do is go through the, through the basics. So why do we have to degree camshafts? So this is a Gen 2 engine, and this is called the base spacer motor. So it's got, this, this is going in a turbo bike. So it's got uh, stainless valves, heavy duty valve springs, good head gasket, head studs, and then this right here is the base spacer. And so spacing this part and this part up higher makes the compression lower. So it's better for turbo. Um, unless you're Lucy and I make 435 horsepower on you, but that's another topic. So what happens is when you raise the deck, this is the deck, the top of your cylinder. When you raise this up, it throws off your timing marks. And if you didn't have adjustable gears on here, it would advance, you know, advances the cams. Um, you can't get the cams in the perfect spot. Factory setting is like 105, 105 ish usually. And that's what I degreed these back to. Another reason why you might use uh, adjustable can gears is even if you didn't change, you know, put a base face or anything like that, and like NA combos where you have real high lift, long duration cams and like NA stuff, you'll need to, to, to degree the cams to make sure, uh, the presser just went on, you, <laughs> you wanna make sure you degree the cams um, to make sure you have the proper piston to valve clearance because on you know NA or nitrous motors they have domes on the pistons and the piston to valve clearance gets real tight so that's another reason why you want to make sure that your cams are degreed properly and that will give you your proper piston to valve clearance typically so you want your you want to take the plug out here and here and you want to rotate the engine over this is clockwise on this side is the running direction. So you want to run it until you see. So there's that line right there. That's the timing mark. So you want to get that. That indicates, that's indicated top dead center. And uh, it's also worth saying you want to have your cams in in the factory positions. You want to have your tensioner and your chain buffer in <clears throat> with the tensioner tight and everything. So first thing you want to do is find top dead center on your degree wheel. So what you do is you stick your degree wheel on and by the way these are probably the best degree wheels to use. They're the biggest ones, so it's easier to make fine adjustments. Now there's two types of uh, degree wheels. This one's the 0, 180. There's other ones, usually the smaller ones are like 0 to 90. And there's a different way that you use those, but for this conversation, for this video, We'll just talk about this because this is probably the most cheapest and most commonly used one as far as I can tell. So you wanna knock your crank bolt out on the balancer and you wanna get it centered up. And then there's this little oil port bolt right here, which works really well for the pointer. So you just loosen that up, it's 10 millimeter, and you get it, you know, depending on how you look at these, you see how it changes. You always want to look straight on. And so looking straight on, this one is about a half a degree. Just spin that just a little bit. So you're, when you're looking straight on. All right, so that's indicate, indicated top dead center. Also, Another way you can verify is the intake cam and the exhaust 
cam valves on number one cylinder, this is number one, are facing into each other. That's you know another way you can check your work basically. So first thing you want to do is check your or make sure the wheel is reading exactly top dead center. And how we do this is with one of these. This is called a piston stop. So what this does is, once you roll the engine past, you want to do that first, you want to rotate the engine 90 degrees, and then you want to thread this in. And what it does is, it's just a fixed point that stops the engine the same degrees before top dead center and after. So I'm gonna set the tripod up over here and uh, show you what's going on. All right, so we're set up here. And like I said, first thing you wanna do is rotate it like 90 degrees because if you put the piston, or if you put that piston stop in right now, the piston's at top dead center, so you won't be able to thread it in all the way. Just go ahead, about 90 degrees, and then insert your piston stop. Now a trick I found with these are, screw them in all the way tight until they bottom out. Until they bottom out. Come on. So it's bottomed out, you can't tighten it anymore. And then take about a quarter turn or so. And what that does is if you screw it down all the way, it acts like a spark plug and it holds compression. So you'll see a lot of times when the wheel's coming around, if you have it screwed in all the way, it'll get to the pointer and as soon as you let it off, it'll back off like a degree, sometimes two degrees, depending on how much compression you got in your cylinder. So this, and you'll be able to hear it possibly, you'll hear, um, you'll hear a little bit of hissing. So we'll go ahead and run it until it stops and see what the reading is. Another thing is you don't want to you don't want to jerk the motor because you don't want the you don't want the degree wheel to slip. So just take nice, smooth, steady turns. And let's see. So this is showing us. And another thing is you gotta make sure which side of zero you're on. So we're counting up here. So that looks like, looking from behind the camera, that looks like 24 degrees. Now we wanna roll the engine backwards the other way and see if we're getting the same reading on the other side. So that was 24. It also helps if you have the starter motor out and of course the rest of the spark plugs. Again, now we're on the back side of zero, so we're counting up this way. So we're at 25, 26. And so, okay, there's a discrepancy there. So on the other side, we had 24, and on this side, we had 26. So how you fix that is you split the difference. So if we're on 24 on the other side and 26 over here, if we bump the wheel, 25. Now we should get the same reading on the other side. So 
you just want to keep doing this and tweaking it until it reads the same on both sides. So we're looking for 25 here now. Yep, 25. So, all right, that's good. So let me go ahead here and get set up for the next part. All right, so here we're set up with the uh, with the dial indicator. This is just a Jags magnetic base uh, dot uh, indicator. So if you turn this one nine times around, it's one inch. But we're not worried. But all we're really worried about is counting how many times this goes around. To, to put this in the most basic layman's terms. So I inserted pictures, or I will insert pictures of how to set this up with the plunger. So that's a coat hanger that's just taped on. And uh, you know, when you set this up, you wanna, of course you wanna miss the cam and you wanna put it on the bucket. Like I said, I'll, I took some pictures that I'll throw in just because this is hard to, Hard to show on video <clears throat> but basically what we want to do is get it set up and then first thing we want to do is make sure that the cam lobe isn't hitting the the pointer or the what the hell am I calling plunger it? the clothes hanger here and you want to make sure it goes through all of its sweep and comes back to close roughly zero so See right here, the cam lobes straight up, so we're just gonna spin. And. All right. And this is worth noting. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll catch it. We'll get there when we get there. So it spins up. Drops back the other way. And we should be, if I can get my wrench back on. All right. Good. So with the stock camshafts, and this is goes for, or this goes for the intake and exhaust, um, you want to measure about Five thou, or sorry, it'd be twenty before and after uh, the center of the cam lobe. So how you do that is once this starts moving, we want to count up to we want to count five. So let's roll this over. So it's starting to move. One two, three, four, and now you just want to inch up on it. And five. So that's about 20,000 before maximum lift. <clears throat> then you want to take your number. So I'll show on the side here what it is but it's uh, 165, and you wanna make note of that. Now we wanna measure from the same spot on the other side of the camshaft. So we keep rolling it forward, and we'll go like one and a half times, you'll see. You'll see what I mean, just watch. Don't get confused yet. So there's one, and you get like a half a sweep, three quarters, okay. And then it's going to start falling. Let's go back to zero. And then one more time, and that'll be about 20 thou. Get it back to zero there. That is uh, 
45. So what you do is you take the first number you got off your degree wheel over here, off the degree wheel. So you do 65 plus 45, and that gives you 210. Then you take that number and you divide that by two, and that's 105. And it just so happens we want this camshaft at 105. I'm gonna do another shot from the side here, and uh, yeah, I'll show you what, what, what I mean. All right, I'm gonna do the same thing again, except for from the side view, and uh, so you can see what I'm talking about. And I'm gonna talk through it again. So we're gonna roll. Roll it over. All right, the needle just started moving. So that's one, two, three, four, and five. And you wanna take that reading. So remember, you gotta pay attention to which way the numbers are going up, because sometimes it's easy to say that this is one, so 170, 175, when actually the numbers are going up from right to left. So this is 160, 165. So 165. And then one more time around. And this is like our half sweep. back to zero, and we do one more time around. Okay, and if we look, number's going up, 45, so again, 165 plus 45 is 210, and then you divide that by two, and that's 105, and that's exactly where we want our cam center line. So once you get done degreening your cams, I'll post up. Um, if you want to raise or lower your numbers, each cam is opposite, and I'll, I'll post the rule up here in a second, because if I try to say it off the top of my head, I always mess it up. But uh, when you get done, you want to remove one bolt at a time, put red lock, well, clean it and brake clean, and put red lock tight on and snug that bolt in nice and snug. And then roll the engine over, get the other bolt, and you want to do that to all four bolts. And once you do that, you can take everything apart and then uh, slap that bitch in the back in the bike and uh, have fun. End of video upbeat music. Like and subscribe.